and giving counsel from the Word of God. Sometimes we say, it's, well, it's not compassionate to stand. Well, it's not compassionate for the doctor not to tell you the truth, is it? But he stands on the truth of what the, result, what the test results say, right? So as a spiritual leader observes your life, and you allow them to peer into your life, and they give you spiritual counsel, they're just doing it from an observation point, standpoint, right? Are, are, we, are we not coming here to change? Or are we just coming here for nothing? Listen, I'm not, I'm, not here, I'm not here to beat the air. I'm not. I'm here to challenge you so that God can change you. And change doesn't come easy. The Lord is compassionate, but he's also not willing that any should perish. But he's also the righteous judge. He's offering salvation. That's compassion. He loves man so much that he made a way through Jesus Christ. Yet people want every other higher power but Christ, the only power. Some of you have told me you've attended other meetings where you cannot mention Christ's name. I've personally been asked to leave meetings because I'm not an alcoholic. I went with a, a man when I was first early in the program. He says, hey, can you come to an AA meeting with me? I says, yes, I can. I walked in there. We're going around the room, and they're asking everyone you know, their name. So I says, I'm Dennis Stamper, and I didn't put anything on the end of it. And the moderator stood up, and he says, are you, um, are you an alcoholic? I says, no, I'm not. He goes, please leave. I mean, it was that abrupt. Please leave. I said, well, I'm here to support so-and-so. This is a closed meeting. Please leave. That will never happen here. Our you is about the whole family and everybody associated with the person that's struggling. And I'm going to tell you this. If you are part of a family that's struggling, the whole family should be coming. Everybody. Because you have to deal with the person that's struggling. Right? And there's provisions in the scripture to tell us how to do that as we offend those that love us. All that say they are Christian do not necessarily lift up the name of Christ, the name above all names. They may be Christian in, in what they say and the principles that they try to talk about, but their deeds are not, not that. Am I making sense? I just had a person call me two days ago, and we're talking, he says, well, I'd like to know about your program. As well, it's not my program, it's the Lord's program, it's just a national program, I've explained everything to him. He goes, well, if you're not biblical, I will not come. As we're biblical, <laughs> promise you. And I says, I promise you, this is probably the hardest program that you've ever tried. And it will challenge you. Listen, there's people that go, that are into the next books. The first book is challenging enough. Fruit of spirit versus works of the flesh. That's difficult enough. But there's people who are in the next books, and we were reading some of the definitions tonight down, down in the men's group. Were they not challenging? Yeah, they're going to meet you. See, this is, there's, this is like a four, four or five year program, and it will, it will challenge you on every single level of your Christianity. Every one of them. And then when you're all done, you can go back through it and see how you went how you did, there's a guy down in South Carolina, he's been through all four books, and he's into, went through the Strongholds book again, and he's comparing what he, what he learned first time to the second time. Because until we get to heaven, we have not arrived. Do you understand that? We need to be careful what we view as compassion, especially when we're being instructed. We all want a God that is love, but we don't want God as a judge. James 1, 
21. Let's turn there for a minute. James 1, 21. Let's look at verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak, slow to wrath. My dad used to tell me all the time when we were in the garage, he says, keep your mouth shut, your ears open, and you just might learn something. You just might learn something. He says, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness, and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. That word saved there actually means to keep safe and sound. It also means to rescue from danger or destruction. And it also can mean to save from evils. Now listen to this. When we receive the word of God the proper way, it, is, it will save us from evils which obstruct the reception of the messianic deliverance. See, when, when we have the wrong perception of things, when we t- receive things the wrong way, then it obstructs God working in our life. You say, you mean, even when the person is mean to me, Listen, chew the meat and spit out the bones and look at what the person is trying to accomplish or what Christ is trying to accomplish through that leader. That's difficult. That's hard to do. Don't worry, I'm getting on the leaders here pretty soon. When we receive instruction, when our reception of God's word or his counsel is right, it will rescue or have, a, a, or have the potential to rescue. But if I continue as I was, the things I involve myself in, the thought patterns I continue in will obstruct my receiving God's word, receiving instruction from godly leadership. Psalms 66, 18. Let's turn there for a moment. 66, 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. It doesn't say he might hear me. He says, I, he says I'm not going to hear you. If I let things go and don't deal with things, it can become bitterness. And why is that? Because we regarded it. Because we complained in our heart. Turn over to Job chapter, chapter 7 for a moment. This is by application, chapter 7, verse 11. Therefore, I will not refrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Listen, there's people that will smile at my face, but have bitterness in their heart towards me. I've dealt with it. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 15. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 15. Looking diligently, lest any man fail the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Listen, bitterness defiles many things. Bitterness defined in our you as compressed feelings which eventually lead to grudges. And grudges is, is sullen malice, ill will, or hatred. So grudges can lead to hatred. In our, in our workbook, in 1 John 4, our, our, our text verse, text verses 19 and 20, he says, verse 20, if a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, what does it say? He's a liar. You say, you call me a liar? I said, no, the word of God is. I just did a whole message on don't be found a, don't be found a liar. A liar is one who breaks faith. How can you love God if you cannot love your brother? You can't. We must love God. Luke chapter 6. Christ 
Christ is talking to his disciples. Luke chapter 6. Verse 43. For a good tree bringeth forth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble, bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. And then verse 46, is, he goes, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? And I, asked, I it posed this question to me as I was reading this. If you or I have a different power of persuasion, a.k.a. a higher power, what, what do you refer to to make your decisions? What do you look to? As a born-again Christian, Christ gave me his word. Gave me his word. <laughs> this is awesome. He gave me his word. And the Bible says that Christ and his word are the same thing in, in John chapter 1. So Christ gave me himself in his word. John 17, 17. Let's turn there just for a moment. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So Christ gave me an instruction book that is able to save me from hell. Amen. And this excites me. <laughs> Christ gave all of us this book. And it excites me, especially when others, I see others applying what they learn. Nothing, I, I cheer more, no more for anything than to see someone actually live the word of God. One of my, one of my uh, verses that I, that I like to say, I have no greater joy than this, than to hear that my children Walk in truth. No greater joy. I have no greater joy to see someone take what they're learning, apply it in their life, in their families, at work, or whatever, and watch them walk through the door and say, and say they had victory over something. That's, that, that is better than any baseball game, football game, you name it. Not, not, nothing's better than that. Christ gave me and you an instruction book, a foundational reference book to make decisions upon. Listen, I go, into, I go to my doctor, and you know what? My doctor does not know everything. <gasps> How could you say your doctor doesn't know everything? Because I see him on the computer going like this and looking things up. <laughs> I go to the pharmacy, and I see the pharmacist looking things up because they don't know everything. It is impossible to keep it all in here. They reference things. Brian, you're a mechanic. Chilton books, remember those? Right? Don't know everything. They, <laughs> you got to refer to the instruction manual, right? You can do it your own way, but if you miss a snap ring or, or anything, you're breaking stuff. Listen, when I go my, on my own way and I don't have a foundation to make my decisions on, I'm breaking stuff in my life. I'm messing things up. It's just the way it is. We need to have a foundation of truth that we stand on. If you come to me for counsel, I'm pointing you to the book. If you go to our pastor for counsel, he's pointing you to the book. If you go to a secular, secular counselor, they're pointing you to some philosophy. You understand that? And it might not be biblical. I tell people all the time, well, they say, well, does secular counseling work? Yes, when it matches up with the Word of God. Well, what about behavior, uh, cognitive behavior therapy? 1 Corinthians 10.5, taking every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. It's really simple. Cognitive, 
think. He's given us this manual to save my soul from troubles, anxiety, depression, hatred, bitterness. And how does he do that? It's very simple. Application of what's in the book to my life. It's really simple. It's very hard to do. And if I don't know the answer, you know what I do? I go to someone that knows better than me the instruction manual so that they can show me. I go to to my pastor, and I've been here 30 years, and I still go to him. I need someone to poke holes in my deportment of my Christianity sometimes. I need it. I have to because sometimes we get tunnel vision. We think we got it all right. We don't always have it right. See, if I don't go to this book, and if I don't, you know what's going to happen? Then I will be duped by the father of lies. John, John 8, 44, it's on our syllabus here. He says, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. I want you to notice, it says he abode not in the truth. When we are duped, we will not be be abiding in truth. We will do the lust of our father if we're an unbeliever. As a Christian, if I'm duped, we will not abide in truth, but will walk after those former lusts and therefore be unproductive in our Christian walk. I don't know about you, but I want to be productive. I want to make a difference for the cause of Christ. I do not want to facilitate the God of this world's agenda. But yet we do. And lastly, we can can walk in truth and show compassion at the same time. Others may hate you for it, but glory goes to the Father. Listen, I've had family members reach out to me 5, 10, 15, 20 years later to say, I need help. All the time telling me, you think you're better than us. No, I don't. I'm just living a different lifestyle than you. The, the, the thing that, that comes up is, why were they inclined to talk or ask questions? Because of steady, steadily, now get this, because of steadily, not perfectly, but steadily applying God's word in my life situations. And I'm going to tell you right now, if he's done it for me, I'm nobody special here. You understand? I'm a sinner saved by grace. A tool and die maker. I'm making a little little ripple in, in, in the world today with 20 people. But it, if I read right, 12 disciples shook the whole world. Right? 12 disciples shook the whole world. We need to realize this. Remember, letter C. God is the Father of truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father by man, but by me. The way we can make a difference is we walk in truth. We walk according to the truth of this book. And when you do that, you will not walk after the lust of your flesh. You will not walk after the lust of the God of this world. And I, ask, I, I leave you with this question. Will you show others true Christianity? Or will you show them the same thing that they expect with a powerless Christianity would be for them? It's up to us. What will, you, what will you do with the foundation of truth that we've been, been given? Will we leave it, leave it sit and not, not apply it to our lives, or will we go on with our own way of thinking? Let's bow forward to prayer. Have every, 
head bowed and every eye closed, or just a couple questions for you tonight. Maybe you're you're listening on the live stream or on on the radio, and says, you know, I I think I've been holding on to things, and it has obstructed me receiving godly instruction and application of things I know are right. Maybe you're here and you're not you're not actually saved, or maybe you're listening and you're not not saved. The Bible says, is very explicit. Except a man be born, born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Or maybe you, you're here and you say, I'm saved, but I'm not, I'm not effectively walking with God. And I've been believing the lies of the devil. I've even considered my leadership as uncaring or uncompassionate, all because they don't, I don't understand. And leaders, we need to check ourselves. Have you shown a lack of compassion? Maybe you're you're weary because you have not been in his word as, as you should be. Maybe we're weary. Listen, I've been there. I've done that, and sometimes I still do that. Not being in God's word, so when the, the pressures of the ministry mount, I get weary. Right? Weary of telling the same thing over and over and over and over again. But that's what, God's, that's what God does with his word. He tells us over and over and over and over. For centuries he's been telling us. The message has not changed. The word of God has not changed. Men might change it, but the word of God will stand sure. It's forever settled in heaven. I'm going to ask Brother Nozinski to come close us in prayer. I hope the Lord has has tugged on your heart a little bit tonight. Bring the pulpit mic up, please. Father, we thank you that from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. And Lord, we can rejoice that the entrance of thy word bringeth light. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for its ability to set us free from sin, able to redeem our wicked soul, and to allow us to become a child of God and to transform our life from the inside out. Lord, we don't dare take any credit for the change that's happened. We know it's strictly by you. We thank you that you who begun a good work will see it through into the day of Jesus Christ. As we continue to endeavor to apply your word, Father, it's a humbling verse to say, why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say. Father, help us. None of us are as obedient as your son. And Father, I pray that as the days that you give us and the months and the years that we have on this earth as born again Christians, you'd help us become more obedient to do your will father and to the anybody who may not be saved i pray that you would open up their heart for them to see their need for the lord jesus christ that he's not just a historical figure he's not just some prophet but he's the holy son of god and he is a king who will sit down on his throne that you provide and one day he will take back and he will crush the head of the serpent And we thank you that we can be on the winning side. We thank you for your grace allowing us to be into your family. Lord, help us, please. We need your help tremendously. I pray you keep us safe spiritually, emotionally, and physically. I pray you give us travel and mercies in the name of Lord Jesus Christ as we go forth from this place. And I pray that you would bless the little snack that we may have afterwards. And Father, burden our hearts to set ourselves apart that we could intermeddle with all sorts of wisdom that you'd give us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.